Hello, my name's Gareth Hegarty. I'm here from the International Baccalaureate from the Assessment Centre in Cardiff and I'm very pleased to have been here and met all the wonderful educators at the Didax conference in Delhi. So I've come to Delhi to talk about um, the MYP e-assessments but also more broadly to talk about e-assessment and technology enhanced assessment. So beginning uh, on my first point then, um, just comparing technology enhanced education with technology enhanced assessment. So technology enhanced education really has um, been a, a, a powerful um, uh, agent for change in the classroom and is continuing to do so. And I think there are a few key parts of um, technology and education that make a, a massive difference. First of all, communications technology. So whether you're talking about the internet or whether you're talking about um, virtual learning environments or MOOCs, um, so massive online, uh, open online courses, these technologies really make uh, learning accessible and, and increase access. So, and all of us these days have access to some wonderful content and, um, uh, and can participate in, college, in courses from some of the best universities in the world. What a powerful way to enable people to take part in, assess, in, in, in education who may not have been able to do so before. Beyond communication technologies, social, social media can also be really powerful in, in education. So enabling people to peer-to-peer uh, -peer review or um, um, just participation in um, virtual communities to socialize learning. And again, it gives people access to things beyond their physical environment and a really powerful learning tool. Um, when you're on the internet, and when I consider my, how my, my, son's, my son and daughter have used um, technology-enhanced education, they've made use of um, watching videos, um, multimedia content on the, uh, on, on the computer, and then that can extend into gamification of education, maybe into virtual reality, augmented reality, um, you know, wonderfully powerful, immersive technologies that really transport students and learners into environments that they otherwise couldn't be part of or to visualise things that are actually Im impossible to see. So these are really powerful things too and, um, and really powerful for the learner. And lastly, one of the um, common uh, uses of um, technology is perhaps an assessment in a formative assessment se sense when students ha use um, practice tests and things in maths or science um, more commonly where you use multiple choice um, questions and it's a big database and um, you know you get feedback on whether you get the question right and the feedback is directly to the student. Now that's a really powerful way for students to sit on their own and to practice their knowledge without exposing uh, maybe to their teacher that they don't quite understand something. So again, empowering the learner. And those databases can be quite complex and when they're complex they can be auto-adaptive and that auto-adaptive technology is really powerful too because that can really help personalise the education for that individual to, to, to the point at which um, where they're really on the edge of their learning and, and getting growth. So another powerful way the technology can both embrace um, and include, uh, be inclusive and be universal, but yet be personal at the same time. These are powerful things that technology can provide. And I think we can draw on some of those technologies in assessment too. So for example, um, immersive technology can be used in assessment to really take the learner into um, a particular set of um, concepts and particular contexts and explore what they know um, and, and, and to give them an opportunity to apply what they know and to show what they can do within those given circumstances. And I think that is a really powerful thing that we could take into assessments. Um, of course, the, what we 
do get to see a lot in assessment, and, 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 and this is perhaps one of my biggest concerns, is that almost all e-assessment today is based around um, this um, big database of questions and short questions, multiple choice questions, more often than not, um, or just very short questions where there's only one correct answer. And that's the nature of most e-assessment that's around today. Well, the MYP and the IB has taken a different approach. We don't use technology just for the convenience of transporting assessments to schools, although we do use it for those benefits, and it would be crazy not to. So we do use um, e-assessment for convenience of delivery and for convenience for taking responses, but it's not the key um, driver for our e-assessments. We use e-assessments to draw students into realistic scenarios and to really test their deep understanding and their skills. So only 25% of the marks that are available in the exam is uh, are, are, um, for knowledge and understanding. They, are, they tend to be, um, the other 75%, are for um, reflection, inquiry skills, and communication skills. So this is a very modern um, assessment system which goes somewhere towards assessing 21st century skills. And I think as such, it's the most advanced um, assessment system that's available these days for secondary schools. I mean, one of the key issues with secondary school um, e-assessment in secondary schools is that the technology really just hasn't advanced very much um, outside of the work that um, the IB is doing. So while technology-enhanced education has grown and the technology-enhanced assessment actually is a massive business, something like 90% or 95% of all of those products uh, in technology uh, enhanced assessment uh, only make use of uh, multiple choice or, sing or, or, or um, another form of question where there's only one single response. So our assessments are um, holistic, they assess uh, deeper learning skills, they are delivered through the internet but they don't depend on an internet connection. And that's a really important thing because we've managed to solve the delivery um, um, issue, which is if you have a, a delivery method of assessment which is via the internet, then you're limited to how, many, how much multimedia and how rich the content can be. Well, we want to have rich content. We think that's the key aspect of um, uh, digital assessments is that they can be completely immersive for the student and really test those other skills. So to get that media out there, we've got a different approach. We send um, schools via the internet, so you do need an internet connection to download a single um, exam, but then the school distributes that exam to their students, either through a, their local area network or, or manually via a, a pen drive or something. So. That means that all students, all schools can participate as long as there is an internet connection somewhere in the school. It can be slow, it can be unreliable, but it's still sufficient to download that single exam which then can be distributed um, around all students. Once a student logs into the exam, the um, exam will, will, will be responsive and just like we talked about earlier on with the internet, it can adapt itself to the individual needs of that student. So if that student needs more time, the, the, the time of the exam is extended. If the, exam uh, if the student has some um, uh, vision impairments, the text is enlarged or the colour scheme is changed if that's the nature of that student's problem. So, we're talking about individual exams, highly interactive. We've got um, calculators and measuring tools, so inquiry processes can all happen on screen. And then and quite advanced response objects too. So not just multiple choice, not just typing, but creating full displays of their knowledge graphically, um, if that's the best way to do it, um, or using, using pictures and diagrams, flowcharts, etc. So please take a look at our um, on-screen exams, you'll see them, the IBOs, 
uh, website at um, ibo.org. Okay, thank you very much. Thank you.